Hello, and thanks for joining another uh, episode of Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello, hello. So uh, we've been doing our last few shows where we have just kind of been um, chatting at the beginning, and so I kind of like that, thought we would continue to do that. So what have you uh, been up to, John, since our last recording? Uh, let's see. Well, I already talked about a lot of this stuff. I guess the only thing that's uh, new for me is I got an updated in-body. So it's been six months. So that's a long, long way in the past for podcasting. So uh, that's the BodPod alternative. It's a, a cheaper one uh, that's uh, at a lot of health food stores even even carry them. And it gives you your resting metabolic rate and all of that stuff. So I got an updated one, and uh, I stayed consistent with my weight and everything. And the only thing that went up is uh, my muscle mass. So that's a uh, thumbs up for me. And do you do you have that? Um, I was just going to show a picture of it if we had it out there. The in-body, did you upload that by chance? I did not put it in the folder that you have access to, so that okay. doesn't help you at all. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, so the Bod Pod, what is, the, I mean, for those who don't know, what, what exactly do you do? Um, how, how do they measure? Or the well, um, a bod pod? so in, in body is, is done through um, electrical. So you, so I, if you think a lot of gyms have where you step on the scale and you hold these two little electrodes, that's the primitive version. The in-body is a little bit more advanced, and you can just Google in-body. And uh, there's a, like three different models. And um, so it's a little more advanced in the fact that you have got multiple, you have to take your shoes completely off and step on these plates, and then you have to hold, uh, it's not just your thumbs, you have to hold the entire uh, thing, in, one in each hand, and hold them away from your body, and, okay. it, and it gives you a couple of different measurements. So like the Bod Pod, it gives you your resting metabolic rate, um, but it also breaks down your muscle weight percentages of where it's located in your body. So it, for instance, says that my left arm and all the muscles in my left side are bigger than my right side. Um, you'll never guess what hand I, I am. <laughs> are you uh, actually left-handed? Left I did not know that. I really am. Le I really am left-handed, okay. yes. Oh, getting into the super secrets. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, the uh, cool thing for me is it's for uh, our nutrition company, and you can, I mean, obviously the, they've got them everywhere now. They're much more mainstream than they were. Uh, they, as long as you listen to their sales pitch, they don't charge you for it. So it's a low-cost version to see how you're doing. And um, so it also gives you your, you know, BMI and your percentage body fat and the factors it does is your right arm, your left arm, your trunk, your right leg, and your left leg. And then it, it gives you like a little teeny uh, percentages for each. So it's it's interesting. It's I think it, I, man, I, I don't remember if, uh, if it has a higher air rate than the bod pod. But it's definitely way cheaper. Yeah, so I had a bod pod done in January, and I believe it was fifty dollars um, to have that done. So, um, okay. So, it's you did you just send me this? Well, I did, but don't worry about it. I don't want to slow us down. Okay. Just because I think well, I actually, no, I did kind of want to, so i'm gonna I'm gonna show this um on here, you know, again, to give sure. you something to look at more than just my face because that's super boring, but 
Um, so here is, and hopefully you guys can see this, but here is uh, the, the in body that John was talking about um, and how, you know, they measure the different, the total body, water, um, the lean muscle mass and all of that. So just to give you an idea of what he was talking about, and here's the segment. Um, segmented body that he was talking about. So for those of you who are able to uh, look at this on Instagram, you at least get a visual of what that is. So, yeah, And then for the folks on the podcast, um, we, we can definitely put it out on a file ter- server and put a link to it in the show notes. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't mind. I mean, my personal information, I mean, there's nothing too personal out there. You now know my body percent fat it. Don't tell anybody. Okay. Um, So what else have you been doing? Anything? That's it. Just, uh, you know, we're, uh, I I mentioned on the last show that I was about to launch the new body pump format. We did that. um, And then uh, launched the new CX stuff. Those are my two, uh, you know, um, gym related things. Uh, So so those are all... uh, It'll happen uh, next week. So by the time this airs, we'll have launched the CX. Nice. Okay. So mine, um, I did the, uh, I've talked about it a couple of times where I was doing the U-Biome um, testing. And so this was um, to test the gut health. And I've sent in, I believe it's, I've sent in five uh, samples. And again, this is gross, but it's fecal samples. And they test the different uh, bacteria that's in your uh, gut. So for me, I had no idea what any of this meant. So I finally got in touch with uh, one of the doctors from there and pretty much told me that it was normal that you would have some things register as positive and some things register negative or high. Um, Didn't seem too concerned about it. Um, I had already started doing some uh, probiotic along with uh, fermented foods. And so basically that's what he said to do for it and didn't seem concerned at all. So I am not really sure what I learned from it, but it was a, you know, an experiment that I'm glad I did, I guess, um, found out that there was nothing major, major wrong. So, but I didn't, I was expecting, I guess, something more. I guess I'm happy that there yeah. was nothing major, but. Well, yeah, I mean, if yeah, for, for sure. I mean, similar to my C, C, uh, you know, CI scan, it was nice to know that I didn't have anything to worry about. Yeah. And then the food sensitivity, we had talked uh, before that I did a food sensitivity, found out that I had some allergies to dairy and uh egg yolk or egg white sorry so I've eliminated that um I do have a noticeable difference in the eczema uh before when I had done it on my own and eliminated dairy I reported that I didn't really notice any noticeable difference but I I was more looking for a connection between the a food sensitivity and some headaches that I've been having um I didn't really think about keeping an eye on skin. Uh, I don't know why I didn't, but I didn't. So I, now that I know that dairy impacts um, eczema, I have been really consciously watching that and it is improving. So uh, for what it's worth, it, that is better. It's still difficult to not eat dairy because I love cheese, but it is what it is. So, Okay. So what else right, have you question. been doing? Anything? Nothing exciting, at least not you know podcast worthy. <laughs> okay. So I vote we dive in. So some of the questions we had left over um, from from last week, I thought we hit at least two of those first. Now, sure. Well, actually, let's start with some feedback. We had talked about uh, some uh, little training, and somebody in the forum posted. If you haven't heard about it, check out Fitness Blender in the website. You can Google Fitness Blender, but it's just fitnessblender.com. And uh, and uh, I so um, I thought that was interesting feedback, so I looked it up, and it and it has uh, a lot of 
free like online video tutorials, much like I think we refer the question we we're or the comment we were talking about last time was searching uh, for hit style um, on YouTube. Sure. And the cool thing about this is it's a little more curated, cur curate whatever that word is. And uh, so just keep in mind they do try to upsell you with some pro programs that you can buy. But if you just look at the free stuff, it, I, I spot checked a few and it actually looks pretty good. So that was a fantastic recommendation. Okay. Um, one of the things that we had uh, talked about early earlier this year is that we were um, launching a program called A New Year, A New You. Um, so let's kind of, let's, Let's kind of backtrack and talk about that a little bit, because um, I know that there were a few people who were interested in that, um, and we've gotten some some questions on that. Where did it go? What what what's going on with that? So, I can, I can talk to. It. I mean, I don't know if that was my brainchild or not, but we piloted a few online-ish type courses. We did. Uh, hit one with uh, some folks at the gym. Mm -hmm. We did a meditation one. We and we had started uh, kind of a keto or a healthy eating one. Uh, and uh, what it comes right down to, um, in my mind, is at the beginning of the year there wasn't a lot of alternatives out there. And since we started that, um, there are a ton of online courses now. Uh, so I, I think, you know, that was a great idea. And I just think that people with a lot more time and a lot more money have uh, have come on the scene. So I, uh, full disclosure, as I've told you before, I'm a Primal Blueprint coach. Now Primal Blueprint has a keto course that's actually really good. A ton of videos, a ton of uh, cooking classes and all um, way over what we could have done. So uh, there's lots of other options. What's uh, so I, I pitched one. What are some other options out there have you, that you've seen? Yeah, so I know that uh, Brian Williamson has um, Keto Unlimited. Um, they, I, I know he's got that book. Uh, I, think, I don't know, Kick Ass Keto. I think, which I do believe that that is also um, a program. Keto Savage has a program out there now. Um, gosh, Rob Wolf. <laughs> that, there's a lot. Uh, yeah. We will. And actually, Rob, Rob Wolf is actually very, is very reasonably priced. If you get on his mailing list, you run sales every once in a while. His is probably, I wouldn't say the straw that broke the camel's back, but he's he uh, partnered with Keto Gains. And so it's not just the keto eating, it's also, you know, activity and everything else. And when it comes right down to it, you know, we it just doesn't make any sense for us part-time folks to throw ideas out there in a course. So, right, yep. So we will put some links uh, so to some of the different ones if for those of you who are interested in it um, to then be able to link out to the other stuff. But again, it just you know, like John said, that it, it just doesn't make any sense for us as doing this on a part-time basis, uh, trying to fit this in with our full-time jobs to try to compete with any of that. So apologies for those of you who signed up and wanted to, to follow along with it, but we'll, we'll hook you up well, with somebody and, else. So, yeah, well, I mean, the only advantage is ours was free. So, <laughs> right. Right. but Hey, you get what you pay for, right? Yeah. All right, so it looks like we got a, got a question already. Uh, it says, what, from Carrie, it says, what kind of salad dressing do you use? Is balsamic vinaigrette of, I don't know what that word is. I think it's a spelling mistake. Is that okay? And I think we've talked about dressing. You make your own dressing, or no, I, I make I, I make my own dressing sometimes, but I'm a Caesar salad gr salad guy myself. Uh, what, what kind of dressing do you use? Um, so in general, I don't eat salads. Um, but if I go. do want to uh, do a, a dressing, I do make my own. Um, I I use my mayonnaise that I make homemade, and then I just add some sour cream and some dill in it. To be quite honest, so it's more of a, a ranch flavor, but 
yeah, in general, I, I don't really use it, but there are lots oh, of hey, recipes. <laughs> so this live stuff's new to me. So here's a picture of the balsamic vinaigrette so I can read the label. Yeah, this is totally fine. There's nothing in there. So just the things, some things to look for um, because the, if you don't have the, if you're looking at a bottle like this one, here's a picture of the back of the bottle. Uh, I try to make sure I don't have seed oils and those type of things in there. Um, so like we've talked about omega-3s versus omega-6s and the good fats versus bad fats. So, um, so pretty much just think about the fact that uh, you can, I guess, just look. And if, if it's made usually with avocado oil or olive oil, then uh, I think it's probably fine. Now, just be careful. A lot of the vinaigrettes tend to be flavored and loaded with sugar. Yeah. Um, so, and I know Primal Kitchen also makes some. So, for those who, John, uh, don't want to make your own mayonnaise or anything like that, they do. They do sell that sort of thing. Which I'm pretty yeah, sure. I, I mean, there's. I think there's a couple of them that have maybe some non-keto items uh, ingredients. I mean, but they, on the most part, most of their flavors were pretty good, weren't they? Yeah, the honey mustard has well honey in it. <laughs> so, oh. but surprise. Uh, but other than, I mean, but for the most part, yeah, I I really like their Caesar, and it's something. I mean, it's my go-to if I have if. Uh, you know, if I'm traveling or something, uh, have it a bottle of that's pretty good. I, unlike you, love a good salad, so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just not a big right. salad. Yeah, okay. no worries. It's not a requirement. So back back to the questions, because um, feel free to post them if, if uh, you're, you happen to be live. Um, it says, can you lose weight on keto with exercise? Yeah, it also says that you're going to read this question. <laughs> yeah, hey. <laughs> and not me. It's fine. Um, but the question actually says, can you lose weight without exercise? So oh, we're going to well, have hey, you answer that you first. Clarified it. <laughs> uh, uh, well, so the answer, of course, is yes. I mean, we've talked about this before, and we've gotten that question before. So, But pretty much, you know, I, I think that the, although the factors vary depending on who you ask, uh, weight loss is somewhere in the neighborhoods of 75, 80% diet. So yes, exercise can help, but if you're doing chronic exercise, like I've mentioned before, sometimes you can leave, um, more hungry. So if you find that the exercise is, is, uh, making you eat a lot more than normal, uh, you just be something to be aware of, but yeah, just cutting out some, uh, processed carbs in general uh, is can make a big difference on weight loss. Yeah, and I mean, again, I have this the same view. Um, there's a lot of benefits to exercise, but understand that a lot of people are starting in a place that exercise isn't really an option, either emotionally or physically. It's not an option for them. This will still work uh, for you, and it'll help you. So do what you can when you can. And if um, exercise is not an option today, it may be down the road. So incorporate what you can and become as healthy as you can. Yeah. All right. The next one says, I want to start keto, but I am fearful. I have been told that I will lose, but then gain back everything. And uh, this actually says gain back everything plus. So... Um, is this true? Um, so this this question actually cracks me up. The answer is yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> if I, you, I, lo I love your deep breath before you <laughs> answered it. You're like, <laughs> I, it, it, I, well, because it it actually it it almost well, makes well, me speechless, to be quite honest. Um, well, well, just let's just put it in context. So the way that you're thinking is is the person starts eating healthy and they eat healthy for a while and then they decide that they don't want to eat healthy anymore and they go back to the way they were eating before. I exactly. mean, <laughs> I mean, so, if you think about the question logically, it makes zero sense that 
you would think that you wouldn't gain weight back, right? I mean, I, and I hear it a lot and I, the standard American diet and the way that we eat is so normal and it's so ingrained into our society that we have a hard time even having um, any frame of reference to what it would be like not doing that. So, I mean, I think I think that's why people ask the question because it's so foreign that you would go to changing your eating, but then not go back to what you were doing because that's the normal, right? Um, I think I think the first thing that everyone has to realize is that that's not normal. It's just because it's how people eat. It isn't normal. Um, so once you change your eating and you start eating a healthier way and you start incorporating all of this and you start feeling better, the notion of going back, um, I'm not going to say for everyone, but for most people, they don't really have the thought of changing back to what they were eating. If that's what made you sick and what made you ill, why would you go back to doing it? So I... And again, apology. I don't mean to, to make people think that I'm laughing at you. It just, the, the notion of doing something right and then going back to doing what was making you unhealthy is, I, I just, I don't know. And I, and I get it. And I guess it's because people just don't have the frame of reference and they just can't wrap their mind around not eating that way. So what are your thoughts yeah. on that? Well, just the only thing I, I would add is that uh, you can swing water weight pretty easily going from not even just keto, keto, low carb, whatever, um, you know, and then if you have carbs again, your body will retain water just because that's what it does. So yep. a, a uh, swing in weight like that could just be a couple pounds of water weight also. Yeah. But yes, anytime you're on a diet and you stop the diet and go back to eating something else, I mean, you would be, however, whatever your quote unquote normal is, you're going to go back to that normal. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, to put it into perspective, think about any diet you've ever done, right? Whether it's Weight Watchers or any any diet, if you if you go on it, then you stop and you revert back to what you were doing prior um, it's the same concept. So uh, that brings us into the next question, though. And this one we do get a lot as well. Um, how do you stick to such a restrictive lifestyle? Um, I usually reframe that question. So I understand because when I went paleo and primal early on, I did have a mindset of it being restrictive, but I, I think when you reframe it to look at what you can eat, it's a lot easier. And I, I, I think I think I've mentioned this before. It, it it took me six months before I really kind of reset into that lifestyle where I would say it was hard to quote unquote, stick with it. Um, I, I think the example that I always like to go to since I work in a corporate world is donuts. People bring in donuts for their birthday or for some special occasion or a pizza party. I mean, those things are a regular occurrence. And it took me quite a while before I had no, no, uh, I guess like drive to to do it with everybody else. I mean, I can, but to na now, how do you stick with a restricted lifestyle? To me, it's not restrictive. I go walk into the pizza party place, tell everybody, hey, and if you know, I just, I, I mean, I guess I have you know, fell off the wagon and did pizza up in Chicago. But when I did, remember, I mean, that was. Yeah. Like three or four months ago. And then I just said, you know, I, I thought it was going to be like everything and it just turned out everything I thought it was. I mean, like I didn't feel good. It wasn't nearly as good as I thought it was. And, you know, now I, I don't even have a drive to go back and to do that again. So I, I, I just think that 
you know, thinking about the fact that I can have a steak and, and some vegetables with butter on them, whew, that doesn't sound restricted to me. That sounds fantastic. Right. Yeah. And I, and I mean, I echo everything that you said, basically it's, it's a mindset, right? So first of all, we've talked about it before. Your why has to be stronger than, you know, your desire for that quick fix of whatever it is at the moment. Um, And then once you do change your thinking to, you know, Stop thinking about what you're eliminating and start thinking about what you're gaining, not only food wise, because, you know, let's face it, we've all eliminated the bacon and the cheeses and whatever, because it didn't fit in the low fat, um, low calorie kind of eating that we've all been geared to do. But beyond that, you know, start looking at those health benefits you know, really focus on how you're feeling, what your body is doing, those aches and pains that are no longer there. And, you know, start focusing on those kinds of things versus you can't have a traditional birthday cake or, you know, whatever, whatever that is. So that'd just be my two cents with it. Yeah. And you're going to hate me for saying this, but if you, it's your birthday and you want a small piece of birthday cake, I, you know, I vote you just do it and get back on the wagon. I mean, I know that's kind of crappy advice, but if that's like your, I, I don't know, I, I just wouldn't lose a ton of sleep over it. But I'm to the point where I, like my family knows that I don't, I don't want a birthday cake. You know what I mean? Right. So it's just like, you just got to figure out where you are um, in that. But man, when I was new to it, I was you know, trying to make some keto or paleo version of a cake and, you know, kudos to my um, mom and wife for uh, wanting to do that. But I finally at one point told them, like, i got to be honest, guys, I just don't even want that. <laughs> Let's go to Texas Roadhouse. I'm going to get a huge steak and, you know, and we can give the kids the whatever you know, that comes out. You know, I just don't want that anymore. Yep. So yeah, I don't I don't even I don't even do the keto versions of that stuff really too much anymore. Yeah, and and no, I mean I agree. You have you do what you have to personally, right? So again, it goes back to um if your why is stronger than that, and it may not be, right? Your your whatever the reason you're doing this may not be stronger at that moment. And if it isn't, do what you need to do and then go back on it. But I think for most of us that why it first of all changes, but second of all, it does become much bigger because it's it's really not worth it, you know. After you have cheated, however many times, it's not worth the cheat because you feel so bad and and all of that. So I mean, yeah, do what you need to do, but if you're going into it with a mindset that it's so restrictive, you're probably not going to be as successful as you could be if you just changed your your thought process a little bit. Yeah. I've got a, (laughs) speaking of restricted, uh, one of the, one of the people I I teach with at Gold's, I was talking about, about something and we were, I was taking her class. So she was talking on the overhead and uh, she says, do you know what the worst thing about going gluten free is? And uh, she says, I feel so much better and I wish I didn't. (laughs) I yeah. thought that was pretty funny. The worst <laughs> thing is I feel so much better that <laughs> so obviously some at some point her why will becomes more important, but Yeah. All right. So uh okay, so I've never d I've never used these, so full disclosure, I use a urine stick and I don't register ketones. Is this normal? Does it mean that I've been kicked out of ketosis? I have never used a urine ketone tone stick to me that's like a diabetic thing for ketone acidosis yeah and and quite honestly that is what they were originally made for right so i have used them uh doing atkins way back in the day that was one of the things that they actually told you to purchase as a tool to measure um but my first comment is first of all if you are using these throw those things in the trash um, they are more stressful to people than they are worth. Uh, they are not accurate 
They register only the ketones that are spilling over into your urine. So if your body is using them effectively, they w- you may never register. So I do a blood ketone testing. So I know that I am in ketosis, but I have gone um, and tried to use these just to do an experiment and never in the two years that I have been keto, never have I registered on these. So it is quite possible that you are in ketosis and not registering on those strips. So again, my advice to, to everyone who uses them is throw them in the garbage. So. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, what? Well, we've, we've done this before. This one says, what's your number one favorite go-to recipe? We have, um, but I, has your, I don't think. Has yours that's changed? That. Um, Ooh. well, it could. Let me guess. What is yours? What is yours? Uh, the, that one casserole that's in the book. Yeah. Well, see, mine has changed because I can't do dairy. Oh, well then, hey, it's an appropriate question. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes, you know, sometimes they, they have. So uh, lately I have been doing, um, which it is in the, in our cookbook, but lately I have been doing the Italian beef. Um, it's a good fatty um, protein, and I can do it without uh, the dairy. My husband loves cheese on it, so it's an option that he can still eat what he wants to, and it, I don't have to change the the recipe for my dairy-free option. So that one I've been making quite a bit. Um, and quite honestly, lately I've been doing uh, ground beef with some um, wilted spinach and mushrooms. And then I make like a gravy sauce sort of thing out of uh, coconut milk. So it's quick and easy. Whoa, and you, you're eating greens? I know. I know. Um, yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't tell anybody that. I don't mind uh, spinach when it's wilted up like that, but to eat it as a salad, I'm not a big fan. You know, it's called like cooked, not wilted. Well, <laughs> Well, it is true. It is cooked, but uh, mine has not changed. I still think my number one go-to is a big, huge salad. Okay. And you, lame. but you do you do protein and stuff in the salad, though, right? It isn't just oh, your yeah, typical. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. So just okay. to recap, uh, like I will probably make one tonight. So I do like mixed greens. So we've got I do the the shredded up stuff um, from Costco and then some uh, some of the lettuce from in here. And so it's like, uh, you know, got a little kale in it, a little baby spinach, and then some like, you know, not just the generic lettuce. It's got some decent lettuces in it. And then I usually put three or four hard-boiled eggs. Uh, so sometimes if my kids are with me, they they like the whites, so they eat the whites and then I just put the yolks on there. And uh, I got a hard cheese, and um, it uh, works out pretty well. I, Caesar dressing is my go-to on that. Nice. Okay, so our next one, um, actually, this one um, we've had a couple of weeks now, but we have not made it to it. So, um, is fermented foods good for you? They they say they are. I don't know. I, I I went through a stage where I tried. You're the you're the one that's doing the fermented foods for your gut biome. So right. I'll let you answer this one because I just I just haven't been successful at doing a lot of fermented stuff. Yeah, I to be quite honest, have never eaten them before in my life. Um, it, I, I'm very strange about stuff like that. The The whole term fermented sounds like you're eating rotted food. So I was just never oh, one. Is. Yeah. So, I, but I was never one to want to try it. So we've talked a little bit in the, in the last few weeks that I have ate, uh, started eating some sauerkraut. So they do say that it's good for you. I know that there are things that you have to watch for if you purchase um, like commercially made 
uh, fermented foods. So kimchi is one. And I do believe that there is um, maybe some sugars in those. Um, if you, I mean, just like anything else, I think you just have to look at the ingredient list. Um, I have not ventured out and tried anything beyond sauerkraut. Um, but I know that there's like kefir, kimchi, um, sauerkraut, and then what's the other one? There was one more, wasn't there? Uh, I don't know. Like I told you, I don't really do them. So I'm, not, I'm no help on this question. <laughs> yeah. Um, but again, I like I I don't have any personal experience with them. I just started uh, dabbling in sauerkraut, and I I don't know. They people say that they're good for you, so that's why I've attempted it. And they did, you know, that they told me that to help with the the gut biome and all the gut flora mm-hmm. that it would it would help with that. So that's why I started doing it. But I don't really have too much experience with it either. So apologies. Yeah. But, that might be what so, you guys want to go Google. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and I, that, that's, uh, that's about it on mine. I went through a stage of trying to make, uh, uh, like, sco- uh, got the SCOBY and tried to make the fermented tea, but it's not, not, it wasn't worth it for me to try to figure it out when you can buy it at Costco. Yeah. The other one was kombucha. So it's kimchi, kombucha, kefir, and uh, sauerkraut, which I'm sure that there's more, but those are the, those are the four ones that I know about. So, okay. I think we have one time for one more. Yes. Let's do it. All right. Because we always run over. We're already five minutes over. Um, Let's finish it. All right. So do you recommend a pre-workout protein regimen? I do not. And that's recent. I used to do, I mean, even when I was paleo and primal, I used to still, not so much pre, but post-workout, think about getting protein in. And I think there's been enough studies lately, uh, if, unless you're a, you know, huge power pro, you know, trying to, you know, jack, you know, jack up your body. Uh, as a, you know, for a show or something, I, just, I think that as long as you get protein throughout the day, um, your body uses it. So I don't, I, and I, I personally don't take any pre-workout supplements anymore. I went through a stage where I, I'd used a lot of them, but that last six months where I gained a muscle, I took no pre-workouts, anything. And it, every once in a while, I'd have a protein sh- shake uh in heavy like heavy whipping cream uh protein shake like uh we had that interview with uh keto chow Mm -hmm. um i've I've got some of theirs and uh but that's more like uh, i got to the end of the day and i haven't really eaten much and i you know want to power something down more of a convenience thing okay yeah and to be quite honest i mean i'm i'm not really that big of an athlete but Um, I generally work out in the mornings when I do work out and I have never done any sort of pre-workout anything because it's too heavy on my stomach. So I generally have always, even pre-keto, um, I, I generally do workouts fasted just, just because it, it, I didn't feel good doing it. So that's my two cents. All right. So what do we got going on next week? I mean, not next week, uh, next, uh, in two weeks. Yeah. So our next topic is going to be a dietary reset. Um, so it's April. We've made it past all of these holidays and Easter candy and all of this garbage. So thought it would be a good, uh, good time to just step back. And, um, if you have fallen off the wagon, uh, it's time to get back on. Let's, let's get remotivated. And so. That's the plan. Sounds good. So if you have any comments or anything you want to make us uh, make us aware, then make sure we talk to you in that, uh, in that podcast. Uh, how can they get a hold of us? You can reach us at ketoniancorner.com, or you can also reach us at ketoniancorner at gmail.com, or on all the social medias as 
you guessed it, ketonian corner. All right. You're getting good at that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Until next time. All right. We'll see you. Nice. All right. Cool.